This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Adjuster Pro. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout and get licensed right now at adjustertv.com slash licensing. Should you get a New York adjuster license? And I would start by kind of starting at the beginning and let's think about um, what a license is, right? And what's the point of a license, right? So licensing in a nutshell is um, every state um, either has an, a, a, a requirement for people who want to handle property claims or, or auto claims in some cases, a few, fewer cases. If you want to handle property claims in certain states, the state has a requirement that you you should or you need to before they'll, you're allowed to, to do it to work in the state that you have, it should be licensed by the state. And part of the licensing process, maybe a background check, um, maybe definitely in most cases is a test, right, to, to, to establish that you have some base not baseline knowledge, right, and then they'll usually issue you a license. Um, there are, I'm pretty sure there's about 34 um, states that currently that license adjusters in the United States, um, and then the other, whatever the, the, the balance is of that, don't have licensing at all, right? So um, if you're, an adjuster and you want to, you live in Colorado, which does not have a license and you um, hear about a huge hurricane or, a, or like one of those crazy winter storms that they get occasionally in the South. Um, in Georgia and Atlanta just got smashed with, you know, three feet of snow and then it rained on it. And then there's, there's all this damage, like smashed patio covers and cracked beams and the whole nine yards, right? If you don't have a Georgia license, you can't work in Georgia. You can't even handle remote claims from Colorado at home, if you don't have a Georgia license, right? So you're barred from working in Georgia unless you have a Georgia license in really most capacities, right? There's a couple of exceptions to that certainly, but so in other words, uh, it's a state by state requirement, right? And you, if you wanna work, if you wanna have the most opportunities for work, I like to call adjuster, or I'm sorry, uh, I like to call adjuster licenses like keys to opportunity because everyone opens up a new state, which is full of you know a new new opportunities to work. Um, the more licenses you get, the better, right? And there are certain places where there are you're going to find that there's more, maybe not more work necessarily, typically, but maybe uh, highly populated states, right? So we think like Texas. Right, there's three major cities, more than three major cities, but there's the three big, big major cities that constitute tens of millions of people, Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas, Fort Worth alone, not to mention all the rest of the cities in that state. There is a lot, there are a lot of people that live in that state. There's a lot of houses and they get a lot of hail, right? So Texas, you really need to get a Texas license no matter what, because you know, even if you don't live in Texas, because they may get the Texas, you know, the ice storm from a couple of few years ago and people from, you know, they may be pulling people in from other states to work in Texas. Um, California, 38 million people live in that state. Um, Southern California, you've got Los Angeles and San Diego and tens of millions of people live in, in those areas, right? Um, they may get a big earthquake. I mean, I don't want, the last one was Northridge, I think, the last big, big one. Um, which was in 19, the mid nineties, right? That was like 30 years ago. So who knows if it could happen right now, or it might happen 250 years from now, no way to know. But the chances statistically are that there's going to be something that happens in California. California does get a lot of mudslides and a lot of heavy rains. They get high winds, Santa Ana's and they get wildfires, right? So California, I'm going to get California, right? Because, and I've worked California before. Um, you can be, because there's so much, so many people living there and not as many, nearly as many adjusters as there are in Texas, it's not hard to find or be able to like have more, as much work as you want in a place like California. Same thing goes for the state of New York, right? New York State, um, New York City, right, has a lot of people in it, certainly Long Island, um, and then everything from New York City up to Albany and I mean, Buffalo, of course. Um, there's there's a lot of people that live in that state. 
it's a little bit more of a challenging uh, license to get. It's not super challenging, right? So it's not like it's 10 times more difficult to get than a Florida license. Um, it may be 1.5 times more challenging because they have a couple extra things you have to do. And nobody seems to want to go get it, right? So if you get a New York license and you get a California license, right, and a Washington license, those are, those are some pretty good, because Seattle, you know, that whole I-5 corridor between Canada and like say Portland, Oregon, a lot of people live in that area and there's, they're always strapped for adjusters up there, right? Um, this, the thing that, that when people talk about New York being a sort of golden ticket license goes for other states, right? And that they're underserved states where not a lot of adjusters live and not a lot of adjusters are licensed in. You get that license and that opens up, your, it has, gives you your key to open that state up to work. You may not work there for a few years, but then Hurricane Sandy hits and you're one of the first people called because when Alacrity or Crawford or Pilot or Eberl or Renfro or Paysetter or CCMS or Wardlaw or whoever, Davies, when they they have a big cat and State Farm or Allstate or Liberty Mutual calls and says, oh my gosh, we need 250 adjusters. They have to be licensed in New York and they have to have you know, X and Y certification or whatever, the first thing that, that Alacrity is gonna do is they're gonna jump into their program for their roster and they're gonna sort it for everybody who's got a New York license. And they're gonna call all those people first, right? They're not gonna call you if you don't have a New York license and say, hey, are you interested in getting your New York license? We got some work in New York. It's not gonna happen, right? And that goes for every state. So the more states you get, the more you're gonna show up in those searches, right? Every time they have something happen, have something pop up in Indianapolis, right? Big hailstorm hits Carmel, north side of Indianapolis. If you have an Indiana li uh, adjuster's license, you're gonna show up in that list, right? And if they get down to you, or if you, depending on where you are on the list, you're gonna get a call, right? Especially if you've got all the rest of your ducks in a row, you have your carrier certifications, um, and you've done all the little like, you know, knick-knack things that they want you to do as part of your onboarding process. So. That's really the main reason to get a New York license, and it's not just because it's New York, it's because it's an underserved, when I say underserved, I mean, there aren't a lot of adjusters that are licensed there or, or that live there. People that do work there um, probably don't want to hear, want me to tell you about this, but I will say, uh, in the beginning of Adjuster TV, I was like, eh, don't bother. I mean, I've only ever worked there like a couple times, and it was on an emergency license, and you know, traffic, and it's expensive, and I wouldn't bother. I have changed, I changed my tune on that three or four years ago, right? So I've been beating on this for a while and I still have I firms being like, hey, and by the way, you know, if you could just encourage people to really to go after that New York license, to get that New Mexico license, right? To get the Washington license, to get the New Hampshire license, right? The, um, the Massachusetts, is it Massachusetts? Uh, Rhode Island, there's up in the Northeast. Those are places where over the winter, that northeast and the northwest where they will get like heavy, heavy, heavy snow, high winds, trees blow down, right? They'll get those kinds of storms and you can be working, you can do cat in those areas over the winter. Anywhere in the west, wildfires, 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 right? Um, Colorado does not have a license, but you know, um, wildfires are a, a big deal in Colorado. They're a big deal in California, Nevada, Montana, everywhere out here, right? We get wildfires like crazy. Um, and those can be very big claims, even if there's only smoke, right? Um, I don't know that, that with the Canadian wildfires that we've had, that, that they've had this year, um, that that constitutes smoke claims in New York necessarily, um, but they did have a lot of smoke from hundreds of miles away. So get you a New York license. Um, it's not super duper hard to get. I think it's maybe a little bit more time consuming, but it's a great license to get along with Every other possible license that you can get your hands on, especially anything in the Midwest and then the Southeast to start, if that's you've got a limited checkbook and you're like, well, I can only get 10 licenses. I'm going to tell you to get from Texas to get from Texas to New York, and then kind of get, and then grab Minneapolis. Um, that would be my recommendation to start, and then pick up the Northwest and California for sure. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.